Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through six adventures for various OSR systems that I think are all really, really great and that uh, you guys should check out. This is probably going to be a really fast review. I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail into any of these. They're all for different systems um, and they are all great as far as I can tell. <laughs> now, I haven't played any of these, so I should be upfront about that. But, but these are really, really cool adventures. I'll put links below where you can get them all. First is Arms of the Undying, which is made for Nave 2nd Edition by Fausto Boda. Uh, this is a fantastic little pamphlet adventure for Nave. It was done for the Nave Game Jam. It's really cool. It's essentially just a region and a dungeon with some factions, and it's done in this sort of old, nostalgic, that blue font style. It gets me. It's right there. Um, I like this one a lot. Now, one of the things that I would say about this is the layout is a little confusing. Um, it's a little hard sometimes to, to see what's applying to what, and I think that's partially because sometimes I think you're expected to read from the bottom up as opposed from the top down. At least it makes more sense if you do in some places in this, in this document. So I think a, a little bit of formatting change could have happened uh, just to indicate some things before that, like for example, um, well, you'll see later, but there are some, sometimes there will be things that are mentioned and then later introduced. So it'll say, like, when this happens, and you're like, wait, what? And then later on it'll say, there's this in this area. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so a little bit of reorganization as, you know, in terms of, like, what is, you know, introducing things and then talking about them later, that would be helpful. But if you read through the whole document, you're not going to be confused, and you can run it pretty quickly. It's only six pages in this sort of, like, you know, pamphlet form. Uh, so essentially you just have a region, you have some uh, demi-humans, uh, some, or some, some um, you know, creatures in the hills, they're just basically orcs, bestial natives is what they're called here, and uh, you are to rescue some people or to kill some creatures or kind of to do what you want. There are some quests and factions in these um, in the starting town, and there are some other locations nearby that have very, very small quests, things that might take just part of a session to do. And so you could run this as a region, you could expand it, you could just run it as a one-shot, however you want. But it's a great adventure. Now it's obviously six pages, so I'm going to flip forward. Um, you get some really cool stuff. Um, the map is present on, on the uh, first couple pages. You have a description of the hexes. Now one thing that would be nice is, um, I mean, on the first page some of the places are mentioned, and the second page is where you actually see them. Um, it would be nice if they were numbered on both pages. I'm not sure exactly why they're not, uh, but it's, it's not a big deal because they're only described here. And as you can see, the descriptions are very brief. For example, South Lake has a very brief description with a little encounter and then a special. That's it. That's the whole thing. Um, and it's up to you to kind of expand that out or describe that as you want. On the left, you have the colony itself and what's there, as well as the info in each of the locations, the quest there, uh, conflict, and what's false. Something that is untrue or something like that. This is the dungeon that you get. Um, and again, it's, it's well laid out, it's pretty cool, things are pretty clear. The map on the left is a little bit less clear because it's, it's not immediately clear what those little circles with, you know, um, dots in the middle are. Those are trees. Um, but it would be nice to maybe have that said somewhere um, on the map as you get it. You don't get a little key, and so you kind of have to discern what you're talking about here. Now, as I said, it's, it makes more sense to read from the bottom up because, as you see on the map, you start at the bottom. Um, but then, you know, it's just natural for people to read it from the top down, I think. But you're kind of expected to read from the bottom up, at least in, in this way, because it goes, as you can see, it, it, it moves north. <laughs> it moves up. And if you're supposed to start at the bottom, then you're supposed to read up. Which is just, again, a little unusual, but it's not the end of the world. And I don't think it's that, that big of a deal. It's a good place. Basically, you're sneaking up on these orcs. There are some things that can cause some trouble. There are some pigs that can make noise. Um... It's a it's a fairly it's a fairly nice little um, outside dungeon area, and there's a couple entrances in. You can get in through the stream, stream cave or through the main entrance. Um, so it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, then you get the description of the upper portion of the dungeon, and once again, it's a little sometimes hard to read what's what. But there's a really 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 cool. Uh, puzzle in here that I just wanted to highlight the canvas rooms. They're really cool. There's actually a lot of cool stuff going on in this dungeon It's a classic. It feels very old-school 
Um, you've got trolls and you've got uh, gnomes and you've got alchem alchemy and you've got some orcs and you've got some giant spiders. Um, here's the bottom half of the, the map. Um, and again, you'll see that it's just the, the layout is a little odd. It's not bad, but it's a little odd. It's not what you're used to, so you do have to kind of find where things are. Um, and uh, and that's, you know, some people might not like that so much, but I think it's totally fine. Once you have navigated, you're great. Here's the matching combination. So you have a series of runes and you have to highlight the right ones and there's a particular order and you can find those on the canvas in the other room. But you have to take the green slime, and which is acidic and it melts stuff, but you have to take the green slime and use the light that it gives off to illuminate the canvas and it'll show you the right ones. So if the players put all this stuff together, um, they can they can get that, but I think it's really cool to have just this kind of cool puzzle in this dungeon. I like puzzles like that, um, which aren't, they aren't absolutely necessary to end the dungeon because it's not really clear why you'd be here and you could kind of come up with your own reasons. Maybe you're here to rescue a prisoner, maybe you're here to defeat the orcs, maybe you're here to find some artifact or something like that. Um, but whatever reason, I think it's really cool. You can kind of put, all, put this all together and do it yourself. And that's the whole dungeon, just that, six pages. So really cool, Arms of the Undying, I, I think it's great, uh, really, really fun. It would be a great one-shot, it would be a great little region, it has that nostalgic attraction to it, very much draws me right to it, and uh, and I think it's it, it's uh, well-designed. The layout is a little confusing just because it's non-standard, but once you figure out what's going on and how it's non-standard, then it's pretty easy. So Arms of the Undying, uh, highly recommend you guys check it out. It's free or pay what you want over on itch.io, and I'll put a link below to where you can get it. The next one is Canticle to the Goddess, which was made, again, for the Knave Game Jam. Uh, this is by Jim Lasky and Ezra Wu. The cover art is by Ezra Wu. This is such a great idea. It's so bizarre. It's really, really, really weird, but it's really, really cool. Essentially, there is this mountain where a goddess has been trapped by this ongoing song, and the song is getting louder and louder and more elaborate, and the goddess is more and more enchanted by it, and she's this goddess who is... Um, she normally gave blessings for people to live through the year, but because she's now enchanted by this song, she's not giving out blessings, and so things are getting worse and worse and worse. And the music is starting to spread out and spread out, but other people are coming here because it, that music also kind of entrances them, but also gives them a bit of a blessing. It's really cool, and so you're, you're coming to this place, and there are pilgrims waiting outside this temple where it's all like musical-themed, and uh, there are these complex curving metal tubes which blare the sound out <laughs> and there's a bunch of monks and a religion is sort of formed around it and it's you trying to go in and of course there's a sorcerer who has done it so that he can siphon off the the goddess's power and so you're, you're here to maybe save her you're maybe here who knows why you're here exactly but there are some hooks that you can have there is some lore in the background and then some general info on this place now the maps are you know obviously they're not they're just hand drawn and which is great. This is like, it feels like the notes in a book. And I love that. I love that sort of map. It's sometimes a little bit tricky to, to, to you know, to read, but that's fine. You got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> um, and sometimes it's a little bit, you have to read a little bit more into it. But this was one of my favorites from the Knave Game Jam. I thought this one was excellent, excellent. You have the description of the local, uh, of, the, uh, of the valley, the lore out there, the guidance you can receive. Um, and then... The rooms, or I shouldn't say the guidance you receive, guidance for you, I think. It's like, what, what will happen if this happens? And then you have the rooms of the, of the field, of the valley. And you have the market, the gates, the refugee camp. Um, and then there's some events that can occur if you hang out there with some enemies, the monks and the bandits. And then you get the dungeon itself, the brass section. <laughs> and you get the descriptions, and you have this sort of side view and you have, right, tubes, the town, there's a workshop, there's a control room, you have, like, the boiler. You have to, like, navigate through this. <laughs> there's a villain named Pockabell, or Pockabell, which is great. Uh, Pockabell and the Hobgoblin Guards. And, uh, essentially, you're going through this, uh, this musical thing, trying to get through it. And then you go through there and you get into the pipe organ section. <laughs> there's the entrance hall, there's magma up down below, there's the bellows, the pipes. And so you're basically going through musical instruments. Uh, there's an organist in here who's making the pipes play the particular music. Um, it's so cool. Absolutely so cool. Um, the string section. <laughs> and there's a giant uh, bow and pressers and a slide and pegs. 
I mean, some players, and of course the, the, the violinist here is a guy named Ma, or a lady named Ma. Um, that's very, very funny. Um, yeah, matronly first chair. I think that's really funny. He's like, yo, yo, Ma, of course. Then you get the percussion section, right? So you get this, <laughs> it's just a, an orchestra. There's a giant there playing on like xylophones. Uh, then you get the pit, the pulpit, and of course then the stage. And the stage is where the sorcerer is, and it's where the goddess is being enraptured. Um, and uh, if, uh, if you do manage to stop the music, she wakes up and she's like, no, oh, that wasn't very good. And then she leaves. Maybe she gives you a blessing, maybe not. But that's it. And then she goes back to being a goddess again. And then you get uh, the final pages. So you get loot tables, global event tables. When things start slowing down, you need more chaos. Some random thing happens. Musical puzzles, if you want to add them into the passages. Some, some interesting refugees. Some charm checks, if you want to, uh, to get a spell book. Um, and, uh, and that's it. This is so good. I love this one, Canticle to the Goddess. If you if you know music, or if you're a musician, or if you if your players are musicians, or they just want to get into a really very thematically interesting adventure, which is very very, um, I mean, it's all coherent in terms of its theme. Pick something like Canticle to the Goddess. Really cool idea. All right, the next one is the Smoking Worm Monographs. Uh, this is Volume One, Number One, which is for uh, for whom the bell trolls. Um, this is really, really good. So I got this as part of a, a, a gift from one of my uh, uh, viewers. Um, they said, hey, th I don't even think this viewer was in particular this creator. This viewer just said, hey, here is this PDF, um, sent it to me through a drive through RPG, and said, hey, uh, I think you should review it. So thank you to that viewer. Um, and also, uh, wow, really good. Really, really good. This is a great adventure. So it's for DCC, and the idea is you're a bunch of trolls, and so there's a whole bunch of occupations and backgrounds for trolls. It's a level one adventure, but you have uh, troll characters uh, as opposed to humans. And the goal is you're trying to sneak into a human town, steal their bell, and bring it back to a troll witch, basically. Um, but it doesn't go as simple as that, of course. And I, I love the occupations and items that trolls have. They're really, really funny. Really, really great. You get a job from Stone Tooth. There's Oh, this is how it's laid out. There are scenes, locations, and events, and then there are creatures and what they do. It's pretty well laid out. It's also fairly linear. This is one of those adventures where you're going to start in this scene, you're going to go to the next scene, you're going to go to the next scene, and you have choices you can make in those scenes, especially when you get to the town, then it's wide open, and there are lots of things that could happen, lots of locations, things to roll in those locations, but it's going to begin the same way, and it's probably going to end the same way, uh, unless, you know, everybody dies, basically. Um, and even then, like at the beginning, the if the party refuses initially, they're all beaten up and done subdual damage to. They're not killed. And uh, so it's, it does pretty much sound like it's, it's kind of on the rails a little bit. But that middle section opens up, and I like that. It's the ideas that are so good here. And the artwork and everything, it's laid out so well. So you get a bunch of these uh, trolls. Uh, Tom, Birdie, uh, they're just great names. And they're not evil exactly. Well, they're not, they're, they're not nice. Um, as you travel, you go to the village, you, you meet the boy who cried wolf, <laughs> which is great. You can get a thunderstone, which is this funny kind of cursed magic item. It's, a, it's not a cursed magic item exactly, it's just a dangerous one. Whenever you pass it to a new owner, a minute later, they're struck by lightning. <laughs> so uh, the, every time it exchanges owners, this happens. And that's the only magic it has. Once you once that's struck, you don't... Uh, you don't get to do it again. It's not a command stone. So it's just literally, a, once it exchanges owners, poof, that person struck by lightning. So you can maybe throw it at an enemy, try to get them to catch it. You could trade it to the enemy that you want. But how are you going to get it in the first place? Because it's going to strike you with lightning. So it's a funny magic item. I like it a lot. You get the village itself. You're trying to poison the well uh, and then get the bell. And uh, there's a doom clock going on. So if you make too much noise, the guards come out. They're old bear is a drunken old berserker who's who's out here. He wants to steal any alcohol that you might have. He thinks the potion that you have is alcohol. Um, here's a map of the town. I really like it. It's really, really cool. It's laid out in a very nice way, and it looks very authentic. It doesn't look like a lot of the fantasy towns you get in D&D games. This looks like an actual medieval town, and uh, and there's like a stockyard, and there's a graveyard, and there's a, you know, a, a holy grove, and there's temples and stuff. All, a bunch of stuff that you could encounter and run into. And there are different events, different people, um, different options for how to approach this thing. Uh, you can get jailed. 
and there are jail occupants if you want to write them in, um, and how you might escape if you're captured, uh, what might happen there. There's the temple, where the bell is, the showdown in the woods. So once you've gotten the bell, you got to go out to the woods and return the bell to the, the stone troll. And she's there, but now the temple people have come as well, and there's a big showdown between them. Who do you, Which side do you join? Do you switch sides? Do you run away? If you run away, you're still going to get kind of probably a final battle because there's a giant ogre bear polymorphed to fight you if you run away. Uh, plenty of stuff. So this is a really great uh, level 1 DCC adventure. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, I'll put links below where you can get it. It's really cool, and the uh, the, the art is really good. The, the, uh, the style, the vibe of it is great, and it's part of a series that uh, I really like too. So at some point I'm going to be checking out uh, Smoking Worm Monographs, uh, the rest of the series. So thank you to my subscriber for sending this to me through DriveThruRPG, and uh, I really appreciate that. The next one here is the Antrim of the Chrysothul. Uh, this is also sent to me by uh, the creator. Um, this is a really, really through Drive Through RPG. This is a really, really cool one-shot undead adventure, higher level adventure for old school essentials, and uh, yeah, level six through eight adventure. It's got great art. Um, mostly, I think it's like adapted public domain art, um, but there are some illustrations for this, for this as well. Um, this is a really, really cool, uh, cool adventure. The map is a Dyson Logos map that has been edited and redesigned, and uh, or rather, I should say, maybe filtered. His way of putting it, and it looks really good. It's a great map. And then you get, uh, uh, yeah, the introduction. So it's a very straightforward. It's it's hyperlinked, but it's not a very long document. It's only thirteen pages, uh, or rather, yeah, thirteen pages um, here. And essentially, you just have a dungeon full of undead. There's a necromancer who has a sort of sim simulacrum of himself running the dungeon, and you've got a beast at the end of it, a, a sort of a stitched horror. And that's it. It's basically just a dungeon with treasure, stitch horror, and a, a villain that even if you kill him here, and in fact, if you do kill him here, um, he's not dead because it's just a simulacrum. So it's sort of an ongoing villain. So if you want a, a background villain in your adventure somewhere, and an ongoing villain, then this is great. Uh, really, really good. You have some rumors. The Rolling Red, which is the region and heading out there. It's pretty easy to get there. There's not much going on, just a day travel, but you can get lost, and if you do, you get some random encounters with bandits, wolves, or undead. And then there's the Antrim itself. There are a couple instant death traps, or not only death traps, they're just instant death features. Um, they're not going to trap you, they're just there, and they're pretty dangerous looking, so it's not uh, it's not likely that players are going to wander into them, but I could see a level 6 or 8 character getting mad if they just wander into this thing. They're like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to enter it. Granted, if you have a level 6 to 8 character, probably they're smart enough to know not to do random things like that. But they're just gone. I might not make them disappear forever, as it says here. I might make it they go to the other plane and they can be retrieved or rescued or something like that. Maybe that's an ongoing quest after the fact. But maybe, yeah, they're, they're gone from this adventure. But maybe they're not dead forever, especially if it's a well-beloved character or something like that. But if it's a one-shot, yeah, it's not going to matter too much. You get these... Um, Various ways through. Now, one thing is that there isn't a map until the very end, and that's a little harder for me to follow. You can get the map. You can keep it open in another file. If you download this, you'll get the maps, and so you can have it open while you're reading through it. That's what I'd recommend, but it would be nice to have them on the pages. Um, but essentially, you just go through. There's, you know, magic items basically in every room. There are creatures in almost every room. It's a very standard old-school essentials dungeon in that regard. This, is, this feels, um, this feels old-school. It feels solid. It's like you know, it's, it's, it's not... The design and the layout looks pretty fancy, but the actual adventure itself, I, I shouldn't say it's nothing fancy, but it's like, hey, we're going to play some old school essentials tonight. It's like, great. An undead adventure with old school essentials? That's the Antrim of the Chrysothul. Chris, it's just like, straightforward. <laughs> in that sense. I like that a lot. Now, I think it's the Chrysothul. Yeah, Chrysothul. Uh, and you get a bunch of good rooms. Again, there's lots of creatures here. There's lots of... Uh, Undead. Now, one of the things here is that the translation into English a couple times leaves out some articles or isn't quite precisely right. Um, so, why did you left us? It should be why did you leave us. But you could say that you know it's a translation, or it's the uh, uh, or it's just some one of the one of the uh, priests just writing or one of the people just writing. So, right? Why did you why did you betray your servants? That's fine. But then later on is why the high priestess left us here to, there to die. 
um, you know, why did is what you'd want to say there. Again, there's just a little, a few minor editing there, things in the in the, the English translation of the actual text that people are saying. But for the most part, the room descriptions are fine. Um, that's just a matter of, you know, minor adjustment, obviously. And I don't even think it needs to be adjusted. If it's someone in the world writing, they say what they say. Uh, you get this magic item, which allows you to commune with this this one particular chaotic god. Not a very good one, so you got to be careful with it. But it's a, a massive thing of cinnabar, which is very valuable. Um, and then you have uh, seeds of evil, which is one of those shapeless blobs. Basically, both of those things are how undead are being warped into this world from other dimensions, from this place. And so you want to stop that. But to stop that, you kind of just have to kill the necromancer. It doesn't seem like there's any other way to stop this ritual. Is, or stop this effect is you just got to kill him. Um, or at least this simulacrum that is summoning him. You go to the very back of the dungeon, he's there. If you fight him, um, every round you fight him, the stitch, the thing that's with him, can wake up and jo open its cell and join the battle. So you got to be careful there. It's sort of like a, we got to kill him quick. And you get a big ruby if you kill him. But then he says, at least I know you better, and then vanishes. So he's an ongoing villain, right? And the two anchors vanish. Then you get some new monsters in the back of the book. You get the Stitched, uh, with a cool piece of art and a great description of it there. The Swarm of Rust Scorpions and the Simulacrum itself. And that's it. Uh, you get the map at the very back of the book as well, and the open game license with the back pages. So as you can see the map, once you get to it, it's really cool. It's actually linked fairly well. There's lots of different ways of tra traversing it. You go from 1 to 11 to 13. You can climb up the, the um, balcony there to 15, go uh, down into 7. Uh, go up through 8, secret door into 16, approach that from that direction. There's a secret door through 17. Lots of little offshoots like the room 9, uh, 4 and 4A, room 12. So it's a really cool dungeon in terms of options. The players are going to be able to explore it, find ways through, navigate it. It's not one path. So I really like this dungeon map and I like what they've done with it. Really, really well done. So overall, the Antrim of the Chrysothul is a great little adventure. I recommend you guys check it out and I'll put links below to where you can get it. The next is one that I picked up on DriveThruRPG. It's not free, but I just I couldn't resist. This is Prisoners of the Crimson Crystal. This is also a translation, and I think you can get it in its original language, which might be Italian, and uh, the English as well. Uh, and essentially, it's designed to look like an old video game. I love that. And lo even the second screen is the loading screen. I love that. It's so good. Prisoners of the Crimson Crystal. Yeah, this is the English version. Uh, it's, it's for old school essentials, and it's a low-level adventure. Um, you're doing you know, a very low level adventure. Um, so the way that it works is you're starting off at a, at a wedding feast, you know, a wedding ceremony. You guys are, you all get to go. It's a great day. Maybe it's the follow up to another adventure, whatever. And then a servant, uh, a wicked necromancer bursts in and immediately uh, transports everybody, all both the, uh, the, the bride and groom and you and a lot of the guests into this crimson crystal that serves as a prison. He imprisons the palace guards there. Um, and that's it. You start off as kind of like coming to in this new place and you realize you're in a crimson crystal. You're in a crystalline uh, prison. But it's got like a little place in there. It's got a uh, it's got a region. The environment in there. It's been magic produced. The sky is a vague red crimson tint and although there's no real sun, the outdoors are illuminated. Constant consistent temperature that rains every seventh day and every other night a light breeze blows through gently. There's also a day-night cycle, but it never gets completely dark. So you have this kind of weird, um, unreal realm. Um, and the river coming comes from the plane of uh, water and the animals come from the fey realms. So it's, it's, it's this really interesting... Uh, it's, it's, it's this interesting little place, and you get to the very edge. There's an impassable magical barrier, and beyond that's an infinitely red void at the very edges. So it's this crystal. You got some of the prisoners who are already there. And then I love this little pixel map. It's basically a point crawl. You start at one, go two, three, and then you can go four, one, four, three, four, two, six. So it's just it's just a little bit of a point crawl through the inside of the crystal. It's a very short adventure, and I like the the maps and everything you've done in the style of sort of like pixelated graphics. Um, one of the things is it's uh, the the breakdown between the individual locations and the broader map is the same numbering. It took me a little bit to figure that out. So this one, two, and three, it's the same one, two, and three as on this map, but it doesn't look like it, right? It looks like oh, this is this is the location for one, and then I thought okay, so then we're gonna get a location for two and a location for three. No, this is actually just every number on the map is the same as the numbers on the sub maps, and that's a little confusing. But once again, you figure that out, it's it's pretty straightforward. You run through it. Love the art through it. 
you're dealing with monsters, you're trying to move through different ways across different dangerous locations, finding some creatures, having some encounters, uh, running into the other guests, maybe rescuing some. It's just a great little point crawl. It's very straightforward. It's not that difficult. It's not that you know crazy. You run through a forest. There's some encounters in there, some ideas if you like, would like additional encounters. Um, and then eventually you get to the tomb at the very end and uh, Gurgo, who has the, uh, the people uh, captured. And there's the villa and the, uh, the dining room, the antechamber of the dungeon with some glass guardians, which is cool. And then the portal. And then there's the final battle where Xenaxarius is sitting on the Baron's throne of the castle. This is his, uh, this is his uh, Baron, Baron's hall. So you, you break out of the, uh, the crystal, you step through the portal, you appear in the Great Hall, and uh, you have to defeat this necromancer. And that's it. You defeat him, and now? Right, how do you retransform the Baron and his concert? They've been turned to stone. You guys have all been imprisoned. They've been transformed into stone. How do you save them? Um, yeah, they're not, in, they're not trapped in the thing. I was mistaken about that. They're not trapped in it. They're transformed into stone here. So uh, you must save all of those people. Maybe if there are any prisoners still alive in the crystal, you have to go back and get them. Who knows what, but this is a way you can continue on if you want. Um, that is, of course, another story. There's some magic items, some key locations, and some pre-generated characters with some art at the back, which is great for old school essentials. As you can see, level two, level three characters. So it's pretty low level. It's not uh, it's not a level one adventure, but it's not a high level adventure. So Prisoners of the Crimson Crystal is a great little, uh, again, you can run it as a one shot very easily, but you could also run it as a middle of an ongoing campaign. The players do a couple adventures. They rescue the Baron. Maybe they rescue the Baron's, the, the princess. They bring her back. It's all about to be a happy wedding. And then boom, this happens. So great adventure. And last, we have Morass of the Melting Men. So version 1.1 of this, I think, is free on itch.io, and it's the one that I originally downloaded. But then the people who made it reached out and said, hey, would you like the full version? And it's at the 2.0, which is uh, available on DTRPG. You pay a little bit of money for it. But this is the one I'm going to be going through, which is the version 2.0, which is it has more art and, and more stuff. It's beefed up by a bunch more pages. So um, this is what I'll be going through. But if you like the basic idea, you can go over on itch.io and I think still get it for free. Um, this is a great, great adventure, the Morass of the Melting Men. Essentially, you have this horrific alien thing or magic item thing that melts people down and melts all things down, all flesh, and melts it together into this big ooze thing, goo. And the entire dungeon is full of it, and it's spreading out into the surrounding regions, and uh, that's it. So the dungeon map is really good. It's very, it's very linked. You could go lots of different ways through lots of different places. I like that a lot. Um, you get the overview. Zork is a sentient glass globe that came into existence by cosmic accident. It once belonged to an ancient sorcerer whose name was erased from history by his treacherous disciple, Theridus. So essentially you have this, uh, this uh, goo um, and uh, the cult of the melting men. <laughs> there's a bunch of people who came in or a couple people came in to try to get it. There's only a couple of them left alive. And then there are slimy goblins who worship this thing and have been transformed by it. Now they're kind of uh, not quite the normal. You have some random hooks, some random adventures some dungeon delving rules, um, and some stat blocks. This is for Knave, second edition. Now, one of the things that is ha happening is that if, as you come into contact with this goo, you start to get mutated by it, and you can just die if you eventually stay here long enough, or if you manage to keep rolling well and you get a lot of successful checks, then eventually you can get a lot of beneficial things this goo does to you. Um, there's sort of the goo goblins there. Now, you have the map on every page, or at least on every spread. And that's really, really good. So you have where you're going. And uh, what's interesting is that it looks like, I would imagine, the highlight of the whiter uh, rooms are the ones that are being mentioned, but it's actually the opposite. The darker rooms are the ones that are being described on the spread. It's a great dungeon, a really great dungeon. There's great art, great maps, great encounters, great creatures. I highly recommend you guys check this one out, The Morass of the Melting Men. It's a really cool idea. There's like this ankle deep goo everywhere and you're trying to like not fall into it so if you get knocked out you'll fall into it if you slip you fall into it and then you start to mutate uh great stuff really great stuff so uh i, I highly recommend it i'll put links below to both of the versions if you guys want the full version or the uh, 1.1 so morass of the melting men the prisoners of the crimson crystal the antrum of the chrysothul the for whom the bell trolls canticle to the goddess and arms of the undying all right guys i hope this has been interesting and i'll see you all in another video